Hey, what's going on, everybody? George Ruiz, better known as Negro's Party. Once again, I bring you another episode of Plug. But today, you're going to find me on Barcode TV where you can eat, chill, and play. And I have an educator, a law student, but most importantly, I have a poet with me, Emily Donez. Hi, young lady. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good today. So, um, you know, you, you brought this idea up to me. You're probably, I think, one of the few artists who has brought up this idea to me to come interview them. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. So um, I've been writing poetry for about like four years and performing for about two years. Um, I've also been teaching for four years and I'm entering my second year of law school. So real passionate about social justice and hoping to make some changes within. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of someone's play, teaching, poetry, um, and on top of that, a law student. I mean, I know law, being a law student itself is, is very complicated, but, you know, going into poetry, is this something that you started from, like, very young, or, you know, when does this passion for poetry start? Yeah, so I always liked writing, but I didn't particularly start poetry until about two years ago. Um, Can you talk about a bit more that the writing part, but not the poetry part? How did, how did that work? Yeah, so I would just write. Like, whenever I felt happy, whenever I felt mad, I would just pen to paper, and I would just um, sort of explain how I was feeling, but very colorfully. So I, would, I wouldn't say that I had a bad day. I would go into complete details about how I felt, what the moment was like, just like experiencing the entire vibe on paper. So drawing up a physical picture, right, but in words. Yeah, I see me more, yeah. Okay, now, you know, you know and then what, when, when was the transition from I'm writing to now I'm actually standing in front of people and performing? So I'm going to have an honest moment here. Um, I think that I feel like I feel super affirmed when I'm performing. And so, not that I like to be in the spotlight, but I do enjoy the affirmations that I receive um, when I'm sharing it. So there were times where I was just like, people stumbled upon my work or I was writing for school or whatever. And people would be like, wow, you're really talented. And I would start to like, it would feed my ego. I'd be like, okay, I could really write. <laughs> um, and I started to really appreciate that. And so then I just decided that I was gonna start doing this for, for the love. Now, you know, how, how, what's, how's the process of creating a piece, right? So I, you know, there was a point, you know, where back in, you know, back when I thought I was, you know, uh, Romeo, um, and I thought I had verses, you know, um, you know, I had a certain process of writing, you know, my poetry, right? So, but what's your process like? How do you, how do you construct um, a piece? Before I answer that, you won't spit something right now. You I just don't know them on the top of my head. If I knew them on the top of my head, I would. I promise you I would. Okay. You know you know what? Before we end, I'm going to go on my Facebook because I know I, post, I posted one on Facebook years ago. Um, and I'm going to look it up and I'll read it off for you. Let's, I, I, can we do that? I'm here All for right, that. so let's do that one. Okay. Um, so my process for writing is essentially just like thinking about, I, I wouldn't even say think about, like whenever I feel something, I grab the pen. Like the whole George Floyd situation that happened, I felt, and so I just grabbed a pen. And I just started writing. Um, and typically I'll just let my thoughts flow naturally. And then I go back and I try to add color and make it relatable and try to have, you know, things that are going to make people think, if that makes sense. Yes. Now, you know, you touched upon the George Floyd situation, right, and all the social injustice that are what's happening right now. Um, did you always have this passion uh, for social injustice, and, you're, and that's why your poetry has always been catered around that? Or did this grow after a certain event in your life? Mm, that's a good question. Um, so my father was actually incarcerated for a large part of my life, and... When that happened, I feel like my curiosity about the system and my anger towards the system um, just grew. Um, and from there, it just it took off. That was like the only thing that I cared about for a very long time. Okay. Now, you know, switching it up a little bit, um, you know, who's your favorite poet mm. and what makes them stand out from everybody else? Um, I would have to say Jasmine Manns. Jasmine Mannix. Who is she? Where is she from? What she stands for? What she represents? She's from Newark, New Jersey. Oh, she's from Newark. Yeah. Hey, we're in, uh, oh, we're in Elizabeth. Close yeah. enough, though. Close enough. But we're from. I'm from Newark. I live in Newark. 
A A. Um, so yeah, she's just she's really dope. Like she says things that are bold. She delivers it in a way that literally gives people chills. Like the first time that I heard her speak, I was just like, wow. I am absolutely in like totally engaged in everything that she's saying i'm feeling it i'm getting chills like and i watched her same poem like 15 times um and i think that's what makes a great poet is like somebody who could deliver in a way that really wows your audience you know so I mean? the the importance of delivery okay. right so okay so this is here's one of my things right so i don't think um my writing skills were ever like amazing right um i think i had some few clever lines right but i what i did what i did think is that my delivery was really good right so what would be your suggestion to someone who probably struggles with a delivery like what would what would you tell them that this would help them spice it up like you just i feel like that's the most important key is when you're a listener you think about like a classroom if you're in a classroom and your professor is just lecturing and talking you're gonna be bored and so it's the same concepts apply when you're writing and when you're writing a poem or if you're writing a song or if you're writing like a story, um, nobody wants to read if it's not spicy. You know what I mean? It's like you have to you have to add that little picante on top of it. Bit, yeah. Right. Whether that's like a clever bar, like you mm -hmm. said, or just I'm going from powerful voices to then talking like this and then I just spice it up and then I just pick it back up like just anything to really keep your audience so so, so what you're telling me is that you know we're talking about now volume we're talking about speed we're talking about uh and and I think you know in radio right I think one of the things that um I've learned throughout the years is the ability of um transmitting certain messages with certain tones mm -hmm. right because you know I I can't I can't give you a very happy message in this voice, but if I'm happy and I'm smiling, I could give you a, a, a different energy through my voice. You know, what I'm, you see where I'm getting at. So I think you know, you know, that's something that I personally, you know, would recommend to any poet that is um, watching this. That that's something that is key. You know, and and, and listen, I, you know, I'm talking about commercials, right? That, that's what that's what I do. So I can only imagine someone who's standing, you know, and and performing. Um, but talking about performances, right? Um, and I think. There's always certain pieces, right, that um that hit different. Um, there's certain pieces that um has a different spot in our heart, right? And um and I have this tendency that I've done it for the last two years, right? Um, that on Mother's Day, um, I write a piece to my mom, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily a poem, right? I I like to say it's more of a, and I'm not sure, and not to offend nobody, right? Um, right? I think it's more of a spoken word, right? Because I feel like I'm it's a message that I'm sending out, um, with a nice you know, tune or little instrumental in the background. Yeah. Um, so, and I always do it on Mother's Day for my mom. Um, and I saw that you posted a video of your mother's reaction to one of your pieces, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I know, you know, you, you said a lot of things in it, right? Um, and I think one of the things, one of the messages that I got is that, um, you know, you try to write it down, but it, you always feel like it fell short. Right. Um, and that's something that that touched me because, you know, even every single time I make these videos and trust me, they're amazing videos and everybody loves them. My mom cries every single time. But, you know, the same way, I feel like this still doesn't meet what, you know, what my mother stands for. So I would like to ask, you know, how was that moment, you know, when you wrote that piece for your mom and, you know, the reaction that you got from her? Yeah, I think you said some really powerful things. And. I agree that it, it kind of feels like it falls short just because when you're talking about something that's so profound or that means so much to you, you can never really find the words to truly capture how grateful you are or how much you love this person. Um, but that moment, it was everything to me. I was on a high for like a week and a half. I was like, I'm like, I'm dead. I'm dead. Um, nah, but I was, I was really excited just because it felt like it served its purpose. I know that the reason she was crying was because she felt all of that love and all of that gratitude in my craft. And it was just special. Like, I was really excited to have her. Dope, dope. Um, you know, and going from, you know, social media, right? Um, do you think, you know, social media, the internet is contributing to poetry or is somewhere somehow taken away from it? And, 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 this, and this, is why I'm, this is why I'm asking this, right? Because, you know, in, in radio, right? Um, radio, as they say, is the... Uh, the uh, radio is the theater of the mind, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, whatever somebody says, you put your own picture, right? So when you read poetry, you know, you, you always get that image. Um, but having that we have internet and we have so much visuals now, you know, people kind of just putting the picture that they want in your head, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, do you think that's taking away from poetry or is it adding to it? 
So I just kind of want to like further dig into your mind really quick before I answer. So you're saying that because we have the potential to put visuals to the poem pieces now, that we might be taken away from it, or we might. Well, not? We, you might not, or you, because okay. because because this is the thing, right? You know, and and I think this is life, right? Not you know. You know, I might want to say something a certain way, right? But you might not receive it that way, right? Mm -hmm. So I also think that, you know, maybe adding a visual is going to help my message, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same token, do you also think that that's taking away the creativity of the person who's receiving it? Gotcha. Okay, so um, I think it depends. I think that you can drive a powerful message while you're using these visuals and you can make sure that your message is received the way that it is intended to be received. But... I also think that by doing that, you take away the thought process of the person who's watching. And so sometimes you don't want to give it to them. Sometimes you want them to think about it and you want them to struggle with the ideas a little bit because that's like the joy of listening to poetry. Um, so I think it goes both ways and it kind of depends on like what you're speaking about in that moment. So in a rate, uh, I guess from one to five, you know, you know, how important is the, the accessibility to the meaning of a poem, right? Because mm. I... I you know, I think, you know, most of the, when, you know, when I did write, right, um, I was more loved focused, right? Um, but I would have sometimes, Romeo. yeah, Romeo, <laughs> Romeo me queda chiquito a me, um, <laughs> you know, um, but sometimes I would put it so complex, right? Because I felt like it was important for me to put it like that because that was the feeling that I, that I was, that I was having in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So, but then at the same token is like, you know, whoever is receiving this message, are they understanding that? So, you know, you as a writer, which one do you value more? Do you value the, the complex, sib, complex, complexity? Is that even a word? Complexity. The pl complexity of it, right? Or the person receiving the message, which one would you value more? Mm. That is, ooh, that's <laughs> I struggle with this every single time that I write. I'll actually read it to people and I'll be like, what do you think of when I say this? Because I don't want my poems to be misreceived or ill-received. And so I think I value how it's received more. Um, I try to find the balance between like making this complex, but also to the point where most people will get it. You'll still have a couple of people that just like make up their own meaning to it and that's fine but i just want like the majority of the people to get my message okay yeah. cool now you know talking about great pieces um and great you know i mean great poets but what do most of well-written poems have in common like what would you say is something that all of these like i guess whatever your top five is right what would you say that they what do they have in common that you're like this is the reason why i like these mm. Um, intention, I would say intention, because that could mean intention in the thing you were writing about. Like, okay, you wrote about something really dope, really important, really close to you, whatever it may be. And also intention in the way you deliver it. So you were saying like, if I'm trying to convey a happy message, then I'm not really going to get it across that way. But if I'm like really up here and upbeat and laughing, then you're really going to feel me. And so... I feel like the intention behind what you say and how you say it. Mm, interesting. Uh, now, um, and this is more of a kind of, I guess, more of the educational part for anybody who's watching. Can you give me five uh, poets who you're like, listen, you, these are five must watch? Mm. Okay. Javon Johnson. Elizabeth, and I, I feel like I should know the, her last name, but I don't because I just got put onto her. She's okay. literally... One of my favorites already. Elizabeth Acevado, I think it is. Um, but if I'm saying it incorrectly, she's the author of The Poet X. It would be, um, it would be, Ace it would be Acevedo, I would leave. Acevedo? Yeah, that's okay. how you say it in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you say it in English, actually. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Anyways, keep on going. <laughs> yeah, she's really dope. She's a Afro-Latina, and she's just super powerful. So Jasmine Manns, Elizabeth, Stephen Willis, um... I think those would have to just be my top three. Does he would Javon top three? Johnson, Javon Johnson. Javon Johnson sounds good. familiar. I don't know why. He's really good. That's because all his poems go viral. <laughs> oh, is he, he's the one that puts like a lot of like images, right? And he's like in different spots at the same time? No, it's usually just like him performing on a mic. Oh, no, so not that person. You know, one of the, you know, one of the, one of the guys who I, um, who I really liked, um, I forgot, I think He's from Cali. I know that much. Um, it's Rudy. Uh, oh, Rudy Francisco. Rudy Francisco. He's one of my favorite. He's the Rudy, Ru Rudy Francisco. And um, I can't remember the exact poem, but he has a poem where he says about like 
uh, a monkey in his chest climbing on his ribcage like monkey bars. So he said something down those lines about like his heart beating and whatnot. And it was one of the poems who like every single time I heard it, I felt like it like hit. No, I, you know, every, I would hear it five times and it would hit every single time. Um, so with that being said, um, do you have a piece that you feel would always hit for somebody? Yes. Always hit for somebody or always hit for me? Um, whichever one you like. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm a, a hopeless romantic, and so I'm always going to lean a little bit more towards those kinds of poems. So I definitely think Dear Ex-Lover by Oof. Jasmine Mans. That's a really powerful poem, and it will hit every time, at least for everyone I've showed it to. Um, and then there's another one, actually by Rudy Francisco, The Honest Poem. The Honest Poem. That poem is, it's everything. It, it talks about just like things that we all feel, but we're afraid to say. And like, it talks about our insecure moments and he's just kind of like owning them. And it's real stuff. Like we can all relate to it, I feel like. So um, that will hit every time too. That would hit every time. All right. Um, this is the last part of it. Um, do you have a piece that you can perform right now? Ooh, yes. You I do? do. Uh-huh. All right, so since you have a piece, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything out of the way. Um, I'm going to leave you the floor so that you could do it. Um, and um, I'm going to see if by the time you're done, I can find my piece. Yes. But I'm only going to read it. I'm not performing it. Okay. I'm only going to read it because I don't know it. All right? Okay. Cool. Let's do it. Dear Ancestors, I know that my Instagram makes it appear as though I've moved on. And while it is true that I was well on my way lately, the thought of you is on replay. I can't help but to think about the fact that I truly never wanted this relationship to end. I tried calling a few times, but I'm not sure if it went through. And either way, I know that handwritten letters have always been more your style. So, one, it's not you. It's it's me. You caught me red-handed, cheating on you with a culture that never belonged to me. Two, she is half the woman that you are and twice the woman that I pretend to be. Three, you never even gave me a chance to explain. And if you had, I would have told you that it started as a one-night stand assimilation, grabbed me at the hip and took me on a girl-centric trip. Four, it wasn't me, it was, it was her. I was minding my own business when she came on to me. That whole night was a blur. Five, America was the mistress I ain't never asked for. Devil in a striped dress, land of the free. And after intercourse, we pillow talk. She told me that the American dream was everything you'd ever wanted for me. You know, go to college, get a degree, bury myself in loans, pay a couple Sally May fees, trade in my soul for a six-figure salary, find me someone fine to marry me by 33. Bump trap music on the way to my nine to five, but pull up, tuck my shirt in, and remember not to speak too jive. Six. I am grateful for you. I don't express it as much as I should because my history textbooks taught me how to appreciate everything but you. Seven, I know Christopher Columbus didn't discover you. Eight, I love the way that you Afro picked my Latina from fields rooted in African descent and watered by fluent tongues that rolled their R's to the sound of Latino Ebonics. Nine, I never got the chance to thank you for the gifts you left me from the kink in my curls to the rhythm that dances its way through my hips at the sound of a merengue to the pastel colored melanin that radiates a glow beyond their stereotypes. Ten. Just because America doesn't celebrate your difference doesn't mean that I don't ten. You are diaspora ten. You are royalty ten. You are king ten. You are queen. You are bantu knots. You are doobie. You are immigrant. You are birth by C-section. You are pain yielding life. You are survivor of oppression. You are fist clasping testament. You are sun kisses earth. You are shackles failing to restrain. You are flesh refusing. Using to crack, you are masterful color upon easel. You are beauty bestowed upon my soul. You are mother, you are father, you are everything they said you couldn't be. You are me, and I am you. Thank you. Stay right there, 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 stay right there. All right, so since I got to pick, right, which one you you were gonna perform. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let you pick which one I'm gonna perform, right? right? So we got Me Tripping on E, which was written January 12th, 2011. Debate Eterno, that was written February 18th, 2011. 
and I called that was oh, written gosh. August 20th, 2013. I called. I called? Yeah. Oh God, Jesus Christ. I called. <laughs> let's see, let's let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. All right. I, yo, I, su I suck at reading. I suck at reading. So please uh, bear with me. I called. And you answered the phone like I was the worst news you've ever heard. And I was silent. It hurt. But I continued with the mission to correct my lips and place them in the proper position. I miss you. Your smile. Because a text you sent me saying your life was horrible gave me power to dial we hadn't spoken my feelings had been playing hide and seek without a seeker i was lonely silence became my best friend but the text came in between us and i remembered you said you loved me because i managed to make you smile even when your lips wouldn't want to i had a mission i became a soldier with the words and emotions as my weapons my heart pounded my hands became so sweaty that my phone was getting sticky i was nervous i had lost the touch of feeling smooth on my phone i'm a rookie it was my first at bat against the words that you said i struck out but somewhere down the line of me not being able to pronounce my feelings say my thoughts Tripping over my heart, I heard your smile, and suddenly the rookie hits a shot and feels confident because his heart was at peace. She was smiling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just... I got a question, though. What's up? Why you ain't pick up? I, that's what I said, man. I told her to pick up, man. She, was, she wasn't picking up. Once again, uh, we're here at Barcode TV. Um, Want to give a big shout out to Eddie G for allowing us to use this space and give you guys with this content. You are now plugged with Visionary.